Oh, guys. Awesome. Here we go. Uh, Adam, I guess, disappointing result, but how do you assess the performance of the day overall? Um, oh, I think I was a bit disappointed with our performance. I was pretty impressed with the Bulldogs. I thought they did a really good job, particularly around the stoppages to start the game um, or start the transition phase of the game. They, they did a really good job there, dominated. You know, their, their numbers across the season are um, probably reflective of today. You know, they lose hitouts, they lose first possession, but they turn turn it into clearance win and um, and typically score from them. They're very good at that, and they had 14 shots against us today from stoppage, which is far too many. Finished off for the chance a good result in okay. the overall picture. Yeah, that, that that's probably when you think of you know we're disappointed with the game, but we're certainly very happy with the season so far, how it's panned out. Top four, likely likely a, a, a Sydney derby first final. So um, we'll review this game, and then move on to the Swans, and I'm not sure when that's going to be played, but uh, look forward to that. Just on to that, does it provide a, a sharpener just before September? I mean, you never want to lose round 24, but does it yeah. give you a little? Something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we got a bit of an audit today, I reckon. A little bit of an audit around stoppage about finals brand, um, which I, I think we're, we're quite strong at usually. We weren't today. We were beaten by a better team. So that's a nice little hit up leading into finals. And if we're good enough, then we'll change it. So we'll see the three layouts. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, one was in on us. But what about Bedford and Daniels? We definitely get back for the first final. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't say that, should I? So Toby had a sore calf throughout the week that just didn't, was persistent, didn't go away. So I would expect to get him back, um, but we'll assess that at the end of next week. Um, who else was there? Daniels, Daniels yeah, he, he woke up this morning with a bit of a sore back, a lower back, and with his history of lower leg injuries, we thought we're not, um, we're not in a position where I think we can risk him. He's, a, he's a, an extremely important player for us. And so we took a pretty precautionary approach um, with him. I would imagine he plays. And Stone was cooked last night and into the morning and just hadn't recovered at all, so we, we couldn't play him. So it ended up, you know, we shuffled a couple of the magnets late, brought in O'Halloran, Haynes come in, and we had to fly Callum Brown down this morning just as the sub. So not ideal prep, but I think, um, you know, medical team and our high performance staff you know, did their best and, and, and we got a team out there. Just on Callum Brown, like, did he arrive after you, the club had already arrived at the ground this morning? Yep. Yeah, he got down here about an hour before the game, did his own prep. I mean, it's it's neither here nor there, to be fair, around he doesn't need to be here when the players get here. He's the sub. He's probably not coming on in the first five to ten minutes of the game. So he, he, he did his warm-up individually and he was fine. Days, they're bringing so much league speed to midfield and losing both at the same time really dramatically sort of changes how you go about it in the middle. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, 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 but I look at our crew out there, I think it's a highly um, capable group. I mean, we're talking Kelly, Cornelio, Callahan, they, they're outstanding players. Um, so having Bedford and, uh, and Daniels out, it, it shouldn't have impacted us at all, really. Um, so, you know, we can talk about players that we got out. The players we had in are pretty good and capable, and we just didn't get the job done. So, nice little reminder. Uh, we'll work on a few things leading into the into the finals uh, in a fortnight, and hopefully improve them. Was Ben completely all right? Or just looked yeah. a little bit down. Today, so. Yeah, I, I don't think he had his usual influence, but I don't think it was because of his shoulder at all. I think, um, you know, he's still finding his feet. He was a bit rusty last week, a little bit the same. Tricky conditions out there too. Uh, particularly when we haven't played regularly. You know, he's been in and out a few times over the last eight weeks or nine weeks, whatever it is. So um, it was good that he got another run in. Uh, I think he'll be better for the run. These conditions today, how much of a, I guess, anomaly were they? Because it was swirly as it was windy and it dropped at one point. Yeah. It was pretty chaotic. Though, right? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was, a, it was a beautiful day, to be fair. I mean, I think it only rained for 10 minutes of the game, which was, wasn't quite what we expected. So. Um, the wind is, you've got to deal with it. You adapt your game. They adapted better than us. You know, they, they structurally changed some things that they do, uh, positioned some people behind the ball to, to provide cover for them um, when we had the wind, and they maximised their entries going into the wind better than what we did. And so that's, you know, well done to them. We, we win every time, or at least a couple of times, where we with Kieran Briggs with his shoulder. Is he... Going to be okay? What's the story with you? Yeah, he's fine. It's pain management. Yeah. 
So sometimes he gets a little stinger, it goes away after a minute and he's he's back into it. But it's just the nature of what it's going to be for the next little while, hopefully hopefully next month. Do you expect to get Jake Ricciardi and Isaac coming back for that first final? Yep. Well, yeah, I'm not, oh, yeah, again, Isaac played a scrimmage this morning uh, and got through fine, did a bit of extra running, so he, he's fit, um, ready to play, and so I presume we pick him. Um, and Ricca, he, his hand, he hasn't marked the ball or, or done any sort of grappling or wrestling with it yet, so he's still got to get through that comf you know, with comfort. Um, but from a physical or running perspective, he's he's in really good shape. So we'll just assess that leading into the into the into the week. When you played Sydney during the home and away, there was a fair bit of build up before the game, a few things said or so on. How do you approach if you played in the first final? Um, yeah, well it's still a little bit of unknown what a Fremantle will have to win by eighty points for that to change. So um, look they they've been the best team all year, Sydney, without question. Uh, yep, like everyone, they've had a little bit of a dip in form, but Seems like they've recovered really well. They've beaten us twice already this year, so it's going to be a tough match. Is there any sort of blessing disguise? And says if it is Sydney, you don't have to leave your home state. It is still in New South Wales and Sydney. Yeah, I mean, not having to travel. Obviously, we do that a fair bit, but not having to do it for for the first final, um, you know, and win or lose, we'll play in Sydney again. So that's nice, but um, I'm not overly fussed where we play. To be fair, I expect us to to um, show up and perform and get the job done and unfortunately we didn't do that today and we're prepared to try and do that against a really good Swans team. Heartbreaking exit last year, how much does that go into the thinking um, well, We haven't really spoken about it to be fair, it's not something we talk about. Um, we, we reviewed it in the pre-season and we feel like we, we're playing a better game now, even though it may, may not have shown today, but um, I feel like we're in better shape. I feel like. Uh, we're capable of beating any team, as I've said in in the past, um, but we've got to play our best footy, and uh, we'll certainly need to do that against the Swans. I know you've been asked about Jesse Hogan a lot, but now it's official. He's a common medalist. I mean, it's one of the great stories in recent memory, especially for your footy club. Can you believe it's happening, given where he's come from? Um, oh, yeah, I can. I can. I don't think there's any player who prepares as well as what Jesse does from a physical or mental perspective. You know, physically he manages his body, he knows his body, obviously he's had his fair share of injuries, some of them you know, incredibly serious, but he, he pushes himself to make sure that he's ready to play, but he doesn't overdo it so that he's, he's a potential to get injured. Um, and then from a mental perspective, studies his opponent, knows how we want him to play, he plays his role within our, within our system as we speak about. Um, and then, yeah. Every time we're kicking the ball, he seems to mark it. So that, that's always handy, and he's a beautiful kick. So what, what is he, third most accurate Coleman medalist? I think so. You, you, write, you write the articles. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to continue speaking. <laughs> so it's, it's great for him. Um, well done, Coleman medalist. Be a Coleman medalist in finals. That's the next day. Any injuries to come out of today, apart from the guys? Not that I am aware of. I think I think we're pretty. I think we're pretty good, fortunately. Thanks, guys. Thank you.